Good day, grade 10s. Welcome to this next lesson. In this lesson, we're going to carry on with our revision for our mathematics exams this month. So let's continue. Okay. First of all, what we're looking at here is a histogram. And let's read what the information says at the top. It says, traffic authorities are concerned that heavy vehicles or trucks are often overloaded. In order to deal with this problem, a number of way bridges, a way bridge is basically something at a big way scale for trucks, so that it's on the side of the road. And what happens is the truck drives up onto the way bridge and checks and then they weigh it and then obviously that they know what the standard weight of the track is and then they can tell whether the track is overweight or not okay now it says this gross or total vehicle mass is measured on these way bridges the histogram below shows the data collected at a way bridge over a month okay so these are the different masses of the vehicles and this is the frequency so you can see that a lot of cars are between the 2500 and 4500 kgs they are very few between 4500 and 6500 and then they go up again right now it says write down the modal class of the data write down the modal class of the data so do you agree that the modal class is going to be the one that happens the most often and the one that happens the most often is going to be this one here from 2500 to 4500 so therefore that is the modal class now it says estimate the mean gross mass for the month okay so what we're going to do is we're going to take the middle value of each of these um, categories okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply it by the frequency and then divide by the total number of vehicles so in other words halfway between 2500 and 4500 is obviously 3500 so the average mass in that group is obviously 3500 so we're going to say 3500 multiplied by 103 Plus, the average of this is halfway between 4,500 and 6,500 is 5,500. So we've got 5,500 multiplied by 19 plus halfway between these two is 7,500. So we've got 7,500 times by 70. Oops, sorry, that's 70. Okay, 70 plus halfway between these two is 9,500 multiplied by 77 plus halfway between these two is 11,500 okay multiplied by 85 plus halfway between these two is 13,500 times by 99 and what we're going to do is add all that up okay and then we're going to divide it we're going to divide it by the number of cars we saw which is the sum of all of this is 103 plus 19 plus 70 plus 77 plus 85 plus 99 so the first thing i'm going to do other than get my calculator out is i'm going to add up all of these to see what they come to so i'm going to go 100 and Three, that's not going to work at all. Let's try again. 103 plus 19 plus 70 plus 77 plus 85 plus 99 equals 453 so it's 453 cars that came by so let's work that out now so let's do it straight from the top we have got cleared we've got 3500 multiplied by 103 plus 5,500 
multiplied by 19 plus, oops, no, damn it, sorry, plus 7,500 multiplied by 70 plus 9,500 multiplied by 77 plus 11,500 multiplied by 85 plus 13,500 multiplied by 99 equals, and then we're dividing it by 453 equals 8,908, 38. So 8,908 8,908,38, but they said estimate, so therefore we could say it's approximately 8,900 kgs. There we go. Now it says, which of the measures of central tendency, the modal class or the estimated mean, would be the most appropriate to describe the set data? Explain your answer. Okay, um, I would say that the estimated mean would be a better um, way to describe the data set for the simple reason that um, at the moment we're looking at whether or not the heavy tracks, the heavy tracks are being overloaded. This year is saying that there happen to be a lot of normal cars between 2,500 and 4,500 that are going through, but do you see that there's a large majority here of very heavy tracks? So therefore, I would say that this is a better estimate estimate of the data set. Right, now let's carry on. In the diagram below, D is minus 3, 3. E is 3 minus 5. F is minus 1, K. It says calculate the length of DE. Okay, so the length formula is on your formula sheet. It's called the distance formula and it's X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared. Okay, so what we need to do is decide which point is 2 and which is 1. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to choose this as 2 and this is 1, which is equal to the square root of x2 is going to be negative 3, negative 3 squared plus y2 is 3 plus 5 squared which is the square root of minus 3 minus 3 is minus 6 all squared plus 3 plus 5 is 8 um hang on a second sorry 3 plus 5 is 8 squared so 6 squared is 36 plus 64 so it's the square root of 100 which is 10 okay so therefore the length of this line is 10 and we don't know what the units are so we can just say 10 units now it says calculate the gradient of DE so the gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and again grade 10 these formulas are on the formula sheet and again i'm going to use this equation two and this equation i mean number two and number one guys you please be careful with this because what we're really saying with this is that um it's, it's very easy to do the sum but 
What you mustn't do is get confused between y2 and x1, vice versa. So if you're worried that you're going to do that right here, x2, y2, x1, y1, and then you won't get confused, okay? So this is going to be 3 minus minus 5 all over x2, which is minus 3 minus 3. 3 minus minus 5 is 3 minus 3 plus 5, which is 8, over negative 6, which is going to be negative 4 over 3. So that is the gradient. It's equal to minus 4 over 3. Now it says, determine the value of k if def is 90 degrees. They tell you that this is 90 degrees. If that's the case, then we know what the gradient of Fe is. The gradient of Fe, what we're going to do is tip this and times it by negative. So that's going to be 3 over 4. Okay. Therefore, that is going to equal, let's call this point 0.2 again now, if that's point 0.1. It's going to be k minus minus 5 over 3. No, I see, be careful. I'm making a mistake here. What do we need to be subtracting by? We're subtracting by minus 1. So it's minus 1 minus 3, which is going to be k plus 5. Minus 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Okay, so we actually want this to be negative 3. Do you agree? We need this top bit to be equal to negative 3, so it cancels. Therefore, k plus 5 has to equal to minus 3. Therefore, k has to equal minus 8. Why am I saying that this must equal minus 3? Well, the whole of this equals 3 over 4, right? So if the bottom is minus 4, the top has to, the whole of this top has to equal minus 3. Otherwise, you can just solve for it, but this is the quickest way. So therefore, we know that k is equal to negative 8. Okay. Now it says, if k is equal to negative 8, ta-da! Determine the coordinates of m, the midpoint of df. The midpoint of df. So if we had to draw a line from d da Oh, it's a horrible line. Let's try again. Um, from d down to f. We need to find that midpoint. Okay, so the midpoint formula is equal to x2 plus x1 over 2, y2 plus y1 over 2. And we're working from D to F. Okay, so now it doesn't matter that these are both 2, we can make this 1 for this time. So therefore, we've got minus 3 minus 1 over 2. Then we've got 3 minus 8 over 2. Minus 3 minus 1 is minus 4. Divided by 2 is minus 2. Ugh. And then 3 minus 8 is minus 5, so it's just going to be negative 5 over 2. So that point there would be minus 2 minus 5. 5 over 2. Let me just check it. Minus 3 minus 1 because it's a plus and negative is minus 2. Over 2 is minus 4 divided by 2. Yep, and that's right. Okay. Now it says determine the coordinates of G such that the quadrilateral DEFG is a rectangle. Okay. So we can erase this yeah, because we don't need it anymore. But we do have some random point over here somewhere such that the DEFG is a rectangle. There's G over here. Okay, we don't know where it is at the moment. But do you agree that we can work out? We know that this point here is minus 1, minus 8, right? We know that to get from here to here, we had to go across 6. We went from 3 to minus 3. So to get from here to G, we're going to have to go across 6 as well. So therefore, that is going to be minus 1, minus 6 is minus 7. 
And then to get from here to here, we're going to have to go up eight. We're going minus five, we're going up five, and then up eight. No, my word is quite accurate. That's zero. Okay, because minus eight plus zero, eight is zero. So the coordinates of G is minus seven, zero. There you go. Right, now it says C is a point one minus two. Okay, now I like to draw these things so that I can understand what I'm doing. So C is a point one minus two. X is one, Y is minus two. Yeah, is C at one minus two. The point D lies in the second quadrant and has coordinates X five. Okay, so it's X five, there's D, it's X five. And it says the length of CD is square root 53. And they want us to find X. Okay, well, we know the distance formula. The distance formula is equal to the square root of X2, that's a bracket, X2 minus X1 all squared plus Y2 minus Y1 all squared. Okay, so what we need to do is we're obviously going to call this point two and this point one. It doesn't matter again which one you call what, okay? It really doesn't. So we're going to say, well, this is going to be the square root of 53 is going to equal to, that's the length, the square root of x minus one squared plus five minus plus two squared, okay? So do you agree we can square both sides? So we go 53 is equal to x minus one squared plus, five plus two is seven, seven squared is 49. 53 minus 49 is four. So four is equal to, let's multiply this out, it becomes x squared minus two x plus one. Therefore, do you agree we get x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 4 equals 0? I've just taken this across. So we've got x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Our factors of 3 are obviously 3 and 1. So it's going to be x minus 3 because we want to be negative and x plus 1 equals 0. Therefore, x equals three or x is equal to negative one. So then obviously, because it's in the second quadrant, x is negative. So in this case, it's not that answer and it is this answer here, x equals negative one. It's a very nice question that. Now it says, in the diagram below, A, B, C is a right angle triangle. Okay, so all they're doing is checking that you know your soccer toe. So, uh, okay, so if we're looking at angle C and we've got AB and we're looking for sine, sine of C is going to be opposite over the hypotenuse because this is sine is opposite over the hypotenuse. That's what that stands for. So sine of opposite over hypotenuse, that has to be AC. Then they say, let's refer to angle A. If we're looking at angle A, this would be the opposite side. This would be the adjacent side, and this remains the hypotenuse, right? Now they're looking at AB over BC. So they're looking at the adjacent over the opposite. That's interesting. It's the adjacent. So do you know, agree that tan of theta is opposite over adjacent. The inverse is cut. Cut theta is adjacent over opposite, okay? And this is adjacent over opposite of angle A, so therefore this is cut A. Hmm. Next. Okay, now it says, given k is equal to 2x plus 1 squared minus 2x minus 1 squared. It says multiply k out and then simplify as far as possible. Okay, so let's do that. So k is going to be 2x plus 1 squared minus 2x minus 1 
squared. Okay, so it's multiplied out. So it becomes 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 minus bracket. This becomes 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 which becomes 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 minus 4x squared and minus times minus is plus 4x minus times a plus is minus 1. This cancels with um, this and this cancels with this and we